There is a deck you can build for around five pounds right now, which is very fun, but unfortunately you won't see it at the tippy top of the competitive tiers. However, in a couple of weeks on June the 9th, that is all set to change, as a couple cards in the Powder Revolve set are poised to put this budget deck right into the tippy top tiers of competitive play. And if you don't react soon, you might end up spending much more money trying to build this deck later than if you was to build it now. So let's get started. I think as a community, as soon as we saw Zoro up from Evolving Skies, we all immediately saw its insane potential. Its Phantom Transformation ability allows you to swap Zoro up with a stage one in your discard pile. This offers a very unique playstyle that offers you a toolbox of powerful stage one attackers without having to run all the necessary basic Pokemon, saving on a ton of deck space. For example, traditionally, if you wanted to run, let's say, Mightyena and Appleton in the same deck, you would have to run a few Poochyena and Applin to get them into play. This eats up deck space. However, with Zoroark, you can skip those basics and just run the Zoroark and Zerua along with your attackers. This lets you have the benefits of the stage one attacking core without all the clog of the, all the different basics. And right now, Zoroark has access to some crazy attackers such as Martiana, which one-shots Mu V Max for zero energy, Appleton, which wrecks Lugia V-Star, or any other special energy attacking decks. Flapple does massive damage to any ability-based decks like Gardevoir or maybe Mew. Slowbro lets you take two prize cards if your opponent has one prize card left, and since you are a one prize only attacking deck, it's pretty easy to set your opponent up in a checkmate scenario. Raichu lets you hit for Lightning Weakness, which is fantastic against Lugia, V-Star and Palkia. Cleavor lets you hit Fighting types for Weakness too. And Breaks improvise consistent damage as long as Serena's are in the discard pile. In order to keep us drawing cards and getting our relevant attackers in the discard pile, we play a thick line of Curlia. With its reconstitution ability, we can discard one card from our hand to draw two more. So if we get two, or maybe even three of these out, we can see an extra four to six cards a turn. Why do we use Curlia over Lipard though? Well, Lipard isn't levelable searchable, unfortunately. This lends itself to a very fun budget deck. And while it's certainly good, and you can win games of it, sure, did you notice something? Here, let me flash back all these attackers again, and let's see if you can catch it. Look for a common similarity between them all. You notice it? Well, apart from the all being stage ones, obviously, they all have to attack for one or two colorless energy maximum. Why is this? Well, the Achilles heel of this deck is energy acceleration. We simply have no room to play any due to us having to play a toolbox of attackers. This means our attackers have to rely on being one attachment warriors. And while we can just about get away with it, it does unfortunately hinder what Pokemon we can play. And we can't use Raihan to get around this because a lot of Pokemon attack for a different energy type. However, like I said, this is all set to change in Paldea Revolve, since there is a monstrous card that will put Zoroark over the top, in my opinion, and into competitive play. Reversal Energy is a special energy that reads, while you're behind on prizes, this card provides free energy that can be any type you want as long as it's attached to a non rulebox Pokemon. This right here is absolutely insane. This means we are no longer shackled by one energy attackers and we can look at some bonkers alternative cards and use them reliably. Trust me, there are some fun ones. Drift Blim spreads eight damage counters wherever you like, perfect for picking up missed KOs or KOing 60 HP basics. Trevenant one hit KOs Tyranus RV and doesn't give up any prize cards if it's KO'd by a V Pokemon. Delix provides solid fighting type coverage while also being outside of range of Arceus' Trinity Nova, as long as DTE is attached. Wug Trio lets you get silly towards the end of games, maybe even discarding all your opponent's deck. A Sparfer allows for psychic coverage and a strong attack if your opponent's active is loaded with energy. Scorvillain is okay too, but to be honest, there's better options. I just really like Scorvillain, okay? <laughs> Scissor will give you a solid option into Chen Pao decks, since Chen Pao itself is weak to metal and, well, Scissor is a metal type. See, Titan also provides a huge beefy Pokemon that hits very reliable damage too. 
Not only does Pardew Revolve provide some killer attackers and energy too, it also provides some naughty trainers that can make the deck much more playable. I think Grusha is going criminally under the radar and could be a whole new deck engine all things considered. Any deck that runs low energy counts can make use of this new supporter card. It lets you draw up to 5 cards in hand, unless you have no energy in play, in which case you can draw up to 7. This is incredibly strong and can make it very easy to draw into your attackers and discard them quickly with Ultra Ball and or Curly. Speaking of Curly, there's actually a new stage in which will help getting them out in play really quick. Art Zone. It allows you to grab a basic non rule box Pokemon and pop it straight into play. This would be amazing for helping you keep up a stream of Zoroax and Curlia, and to be honest just keeps you moving through your deck. Funnily enough though there is another stadium that could be used in this deck, also from Paldea Revolved, and that's called Lesson Studio. A stadium card that lets stage 1's do an extra 10 damage. For context here, if you play a Lesson Studio and a Defiance Band in your list, Defiance Band lets your Pokemon do an extra 30 if you're behind on prize cards, which normally you are because, while well, you're playing Zoroark. <laughs> Your Sitaritan will be swinging for 280 damage, perfect for KOing V-Star Pokemon and also getting around those dodgy V-Guard energies too. And you know what? If all else fails, you have this Lux Ray to fall back on, which if you're behind on prize cards you can put straight into play, even though it's a stage 2, and for a reversal energy attachment there's a beefy 180 damage. I think Artazon will probably be the better stadium since we do have some work to do before we can get started in the game. But don't rule out Lesson Studio, or I guess Mesagoza as well. With all these buffs, I am fairly certain we can make Zoroark into an actual contender in this format, having the tools to tackle any deck in the game meta game. But one of the real reasons why I wanted to make this video is that in the Pokemon 151 set, there are also some other killer options, meaning Zoroark is poised to only get better, such as with this Aerodactyl, which de evolves your opponent's active. And it's available which does 50 damage and then takes an extra prize card if you knock out your opponent's active with this attack. We've seen how strong these kinds of effects are with Stoutland V recently or going even further back with Arceus, Stalga, Palkia, Tag Team. And I like the sound of cheap, budget, future proof decks that only get better with time. Let me know what stage ones I might have missed and what you would be winning if you were playing Zoroark in the comments, I'll try to read them all. And if you want a quick and cheap way to get Zoroark built in this format, why don't you hit up this video sponsor Pokédex, link in the description and use code BERTSPDCG to get yourself some money off. Honestly, it's the fastest way to get a pre-built deck sent to your house as early as the next working day. They also ship internationally. And once that deck gets there, you are going to need some sleeves and binders to look after them. So why don't you check out Dragon Shield as well. Best accessories in the game in my opinion.